So I'm gonna be continuing from our last video where we just talked about Grand Seiko potentially buying one while I'm over there in Tokyo. Hey, it's Editor Chris here. I just realized that I wasn't even recording with that mic on my chest. And also I didn't even record the screen for this particular shot. So yeah, I'm just a mess guys, bear with me. Yeah, so literally they just dropped this watch today. Uh, it's, it's Wednesday, January 31st. And it's kind of like a hybrid between their snowflake and their quartz movement. I mean, look at this thing. It's great it's it's very cool looking it's super clean there's no power reserve indicator here which for a lot of people is a deal breaker for for, for them but um however this one looks super clean and if we click into this it, it, it's so new that this buy now button doesn't bring you to the page so we're gonna have to go another direction kind of the best of both worlds like if you want a snowflake dial but you don't like the reserve indicator this is kind of the one to go for and in a 37 millimeter case, which I think is the perfect size for a dress watch. And especially coming in the titanium case, it's gonna be lighter as well. This is kind of like they're calling for people like me that it's, you know, they, they love the snowflake, but don't really wanna pull the trigger one because we just see it all the time. So kind of cool to see this. I, I know I said that this particular video is gonna be all about Seikos. This is the only Grand Seiko. Kind of. A lot of these picks uh, for these watches was actually done by the CAC Time. If you're not following him already on Instagram, he features uh, succulents as well as watches, uh, particularly really odd but amazing Seikos. Yeah, so the CAC Time, if you're watching this, thank you so much for helping me out uh, curating this list of watches. This one is a really interesting one. It's a vintage piece and it's an integrated bracelet. Um, a lot of these ones from the vintage category is going to be a, a quartz movement and for good reason. Seiko made, made really interesting quartz watches uh, through the 70s and this is one of them. This one is the reference 9923-8000. The CAC time specifically said to look at the one that says twin quartz on the bezel. And the best part of these vintage watches is a lot of them are coming from Japan and typically people in Japan, they take care of their things. So you can get this in a really good condition in Japan for around $300. It might be even cheaper in Japan if you can find one. Now moving on, we have this Seiko Kronos special finish, reference J14107E. This one's really interesting because it kind of has a grammar of design case. And it says here it came out of the 60s, which a lot of weird watches uh, from Japan, especially Seiko, came out during that time. This is one of them. You don't really hear much from it. This is the first time I'm hearing of it. I'm sure in hand, and if you have a really good uh, condition one, kind of like this guy right here, it has these facets on the bezel here, which is pretty interesting. I've never seen that before. But uh, yeah, another interesting pick, super thin. I might have to see this in person to really get a feel. These go around $500, so yeah, we'll, we'll maybe we'll give it a shot. Now, last in the vintage category, this one is very, very interesting. Uh, it's uh, Seiko Quartz reference 38037080. Dial and the crystal really speak for itself. Uh, first off, that dial is absolutely stunning. It has a snowflake-like texture on it, um, but in this really beautiful Neptune blue. And I'm sure every single dial, I mean, look at this, like on the edges here, it kind of has this purplish hue to it going into this really sea blue like blue to it and in some cases it kind of turns out green a little bit and another really interesting to point out is that crystal um yeah uh it's not for everyone but really this crystal is really what gives this watch its character i would say uh, especially with that case it kind of reminds me of a vostok case uh, not not the 090 but there's a very similar case that has this cushion style really interesting piece i have to see this in person and especially running around 700 to $900. That's pretty reasonable, I would say, for a watch that you won't see every single day, and especially on uh, the wrists of people. I mean, look at this thing. That's just gorgeous. Now talking about the modern cases now, this is Seiko Reference SCVG004. Um, the CAC time says that this is a modern take on the grammar of design, and I could totally see it here. Uh, but to be honest, this looks like more of the first, the very first uh, Grand Seiko ever created the, the, with the gold, gold case. Coming in at 37 millimeters, this could be a really beautiful dress watch. This is going for around $400 and it's a manual wind movement. 
Uh, but this one is a new old stock, and six years ago this sold for $900. Uh, but really a very beautiful, classically designed uh, Seiko dress watch. Definitely, if they have it there, I have to check it out. The next watch in the modern category is the Seiko Tic Tac Tuxedo Champagne Dial, reference SZS B025. I've seen this circulate around on Instagram. Um, very interesting watch, but very attractive looking in that tuxedo uh, tile. The great thing about this watch is it's technically it's a sporty watch uh, rocking that smaller Alpinist case, modern case, but in a very handsome dial layout. Not my first pick, but it you can pick this up for, it says right here, $624, and I'm sure you can get it for even cheaper in Japan. Maybe something I'll consider. Now we're moving on to the first sports watch, uh, particularly in the diver category. This is the Seiko Transocean Reference SBDC 047. Now this one's an awesome piece, I would have to say. It's still under the Prospects line, uh, so it has that X right on the center of the dial. But this one is a pretty serious diver. Um, it's rocking a sapphire crystal, as well as a ceramic bezel. And although this design is not for a lot of people, believe it or not, this is what I think of whenever I think of a Seiko diver. It kind of has this shrouded case, kind of like a tuna, but more so like uh, a Seiko monster, where this is kind of integrated as part of the case. I mean, it, it is an integrated design, um, but just so funky. In a way, this is very classically Seiko, whenever I think of a Seiko diver. Very unique, but with also with, with premium materials. Definitely not for everyone, and kind of like the monster and the tuna, it's something that will grow on you. And for me, I'm not sure if I like it, but I'm sure if I have it on the wrist, it might change my mind. But definitely a diver watch from Seiko that you don't really see on people's wrist. Now we're moving on to nothing but chronographs from Seiko. And this one is a particularly interesting one. It's a solar chronograph in the Fieldmaster collection reference SBDL021. And kind of like before, this one does have a shroud exactly like the tuna case. And uh, I'll talk about this later, but I'm a huge fan of the tuna. This one, even though I know a lot of people are not gonna like this, I do. Here's another angle of this case. Yeah, totally, totally Seiko here. And the Cacti said that he saw this go out the door for around $500, and I'd have to say that is a very fair price. And if you can snag one for even less in Tokyo, oh, well, that would be amazing. That I don't even have to think about it. I'll, I'll just snag this up. Speaking of Seiko tunas, this is a Seiko tuna can introduction. This is under the Marine Master collection. I don't believe they make these anymore, but I've always wanted to own a Seiko Tuna. Never pulled the trigger on one. And especially if I can get it at a discount in Japan, this might be my chance to get one. And we're moving on to a Seiko Prospect Solar Chronograph, the SSC817. Now, a lot of you are familiar with the Panda version, a very popular watch. It's one of the most uh, popular videos actually on my channel reviewing that white variant. Uh, but this one's a little bit different. This one has a, a different texture on the dial, as well as like a vanilla coffee stain on the dial as well and on the bezel, which I think is a great look to it. Um, it kind of, it's not really a faux tina. It's, it's, more, uh, it's a little bit more distinct than that. Coming in at 39 millimeters, I know a lot of people don't like the smaller version. I know they updated this case and made it into a larger version. But I think the 39 millimeter just wears a lot better. It, it, it's, you know me, I'm a fan of compact cases and this being a compact chronograph is a really good look. So on here it says around $680, but on the secondary market, you can probably get it for around $450. All right, so another Transocean Seiko chronograph. This one is reference SBEC003. It's exactly like the Transocean uh, diver watch that we saw earlier. This is a dive watch, just say in a uh, chronograph form. And boy, this is a massive, massive watch. But I'm sure on the wrist, it wears a lot smaller than it really does, like most Seikos. Oh man, look at those those dimensions right there. It's 60 millimeters thick, 46.5 millimeters in diameter for the dial, um, across 53 millimeters uh, lug to lug, it looks like. That's a big boy. And it says here it's around $1,200. Maybe sub $1,000, I can somehow think about it, and depending on how it wears on the wrist, I may consider it. Now, although this may look like a vintage watch, this is actually a uh, retro-modern version of a Jujaro design case. Um, and this one's limited edition to just 3,000 pieces, it says right here. And if you are a Seiko nut, you know the name Jujaro and all of his crazy designs. This is one of them. And for the right price, 
hey, I might just snag one up. And another watch from Jujaro. This one's not a recreation. This one's actually a vintage piece. Uh, the reference SA28-5000. Now, I do have a 728, but not a Jujaro like this one. And this one is kind of the extreme side of uh, Seiko's design. However, it is a quintessential Jujaro design with a literal steering wheel seen on the bezel. Is that even a bezel? Is that what you call this? I'm not sure. It's such a weird but cool design from Seiko. And lastly, a watch that kind of needs no introduction. I've seen these circulate again on YouTube by a lot of other YouTubers uh, out there. Uh, the Seiko Spirit. Uh, this one is the reference SBTR011. I mean, for less than a couple hundred bucks, you can get yourself a functioning quartz chronograph from Seiko. I think this watch can appeal to a lot of people, especially coming in at 42 millimeters for the case size. Um, again, for me, I think f maybe 40 millimeters might work a little bit better for this, but a lot of the watches tend to wear a little bit smaller anyways. And I've been hearing a lot of praise on the Seiko Spirit chronographs just for the price alone. And especially if you can get it for cheaper in Tokyo, I I'm very, very tempted to get this. Maybe not the blue variant. There is other uh, color options out there. If I see one, I, I'm just going to pick it up. And the last watch on this list um, isn't a Seiko. Well, technically it is. It's, it's under the same family. Um, it's a Creator. This one's an interesting piece because in my Seiko Alpinist review video, I mentioned if Grand Seiko recreated the Alpinist for the Grand Seiko line, it would probably sell like hotcakes. This one is literally called the Creator Alpinist. Well, not literally. It's just a nickname that was given this watch. You know, this being an older Creator, at least for me, when I think of Creator, I think of very high horology pieces, mostly in the, in the dressy watch category. Um, and to be honest, I'm not really looking at Creator because I don't really like their current designs and I can't afford their watches. So I really don't have any interest to be looking at them. Um, but these older pieces are pretty cool. Only problem with this is that it is a little bit thick, but coming in at a 38 millimeter case, maybe I can get by with uh, how tall the watch wears. And if it can come in at the right price, maybe sub $3,000 and how it feels in the hand, I might consider this watch as well. So yeah, I know there are a ton more different Seikos that we could explore, but you know, there's just so many different watches out there. But prior to filming this video, I actually took the chance to look at other people's videos exploring Nakano Broadway and kind of doing a little tour as they visit each uh, watch store over there. It seems like a really overwhelming amount of watches to be looking at. I think I'm gonna have even more decision fatigue looking at all these other brands and models, not only from Seiko, but from also Swiss brands like Tudor, Vintage Omegas, uh, Vintage Rolex, which I don't plan to pick up any Rolex unless there's some killer deal on one. But these are just some watches that I thought were pretty cool and also recommended by the Cat Time. So for this next and final iteration of uh, this series of shopping in Tokyo watches, we're going to look at the pre-owned market.